I was this close to giving up on photographing EOIs. I just couldn't find it with my camera at all. But after spending a lot of time and a lot of research and just trial and error, I was finally able to capture it. And I went from this to this. This is my journey on photographing Neowise. Hey guys, today we're talking about the comet Neowise, which isn't going to be back in our solar system for another 6,800 years, so you might want to check it out. Let's dive real quick into the settings I used to take this photo for those of you who don't care about the backstory, and then I'll go ahead and tell you the whole story of how I got from this image to this image. This photo was taken with a star tracker at f2.8 ISO 800, 180 millimeters and a exposure time of 60 seconds. This photo was taken in a fairly dark sky area in Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. However, you still can take really cool pictures of the comet and see it for yourself in cities or light polluted areas. Though if you are in a more light polluted area, you might not be able to see it with your naked eye unless you have a camera or a telescope or something like that. So let me tell you the story of my journey to photograph Neowise. My first attempt at photographing this comet was on July 12th at 3 a.m. The ideal viewing time for the comet that day was 3.50 to about 4.30 a.m. So I was up and ready to go. The only thing I brought with me was a tripod, my Sony a7 III, and a Tamron 70 to 180. I was up till about 4.30 trying to photograph the comet and I could not find it. I tried using an app to try to look for it with the augmented reality thing and I just, everywhere I pointed the camera and tried to look for it, I just couldn't find it. Turns out my app was throwing me off by pointing me in the wrong direction. At about 4.30, I just pointed my camera in a different direction, said I was gonna take one more final shot, and this is what happened. I saw this shot with this little smudge right here in the top, and when I saw that, it looked like a blurry star, and I was like, that, that doesn't look right. I zoomed into it, and I was just mind blown because this was it. This was the comet Neowise. So that night I was able to get one fairly good photo and this was in DC with all the light pollution and everything. This was using a 0.8 second exposure, 800 ISO at f4 and at 180 millimeters. After capturing this photo, I was hooked. I just had to try again to capture another photo of Neowise. My second attempt was on July 18th. As the comments started coming out in the evening, I figured it'd be a little easier than waking up at 3 a.m. This time I did my research and I knew what direction the comment would be in and I was able to start capturing pictures of it a lot faster. However, there still was a lot of light pollution and this was the best image that I was able to get. I wasn't quite happy with the final results as I've seen some pretty insane pictures of the comment itself and I just knew that without all the light pollution, I probably would stand a much better chance at being able to take a stunning photo. I started looking up the weather and the following day, it said in Shenandoah National Park that it was gonna be clear skies in the evening. The rest of the week, it looks like it's gonna be cloudy and rainy. So this was my one chance. My wife and I discussed it and the following day, 7 p.m., we started driving to Shenandoah National Park. After about two hours, we finally made it to Shenandoah National Park and I brought all of my gear for astrophotography, including a star tracker, and started setting everything up at an overlook, which surprisingly had a lot of people there. There was at least 25 to maybe 40 people there at the overlook. I couldn't really tell because it was really dark when we got there. We got there at about 9.20-ish p.m. So it was, the sun had already set, it was starting to get fairly dark, and all you could see were silhouettes of people, but there were tons and tons and tons of photographers with cameras and all these other people with telescopes and binoculars and families just coming out there with their kids to go and try to spot this comet. So I knew where the comet was gonna be because again, I did my research this time and I pointed my camera in the right direction and at that point, it was a waiting game of when it would get dark enough to really see the comet. And everyone had their cameras pointed and it was like just waiting. You could hear the tension of just waiting for people to just see it and burst out yelling, like, I see the comet, I see the comet. And then it finally happened. A cloud that had been covering it 
finally rolled past and people just started freaking out. This was the first time I was able to see the comet with my own eyes. When I was taking photographs before, there was so much light pollution that I only saw it from the camera, which made it really hard to spot. But now I was able to see it with my own eyes and on the camera screen, I was able to just like straight up see it while I was focusing and everything. So like, it was amazing. Just the difference between a very heavily light polluted area like DC and then driving out and just being able to see this thing with your eyes. When I finally took my first shot, I was thrilled at just how clearly you could see the Neowise Comet. This is a shot of the Neowise Comet as it rises up over the mountains in Shenandoah. Now, obviously you're not gonna be able to see the same thing with your eyes as what the camera can capture. So I tried to edit this photo to make it look a little more like what you would see with your eyes itself. It's not extremely bright, but you can see it looks kind of like a dim star that's kind of blurry because you can see the tail. It's just kind of hazy and it looks a little something like this. So again, this still isn't perfect and this was using the same image. So the comet is a little more bright than the surrounding sky than it would be in person. But I tried to give you at least an idea of what it looks like in person if you haven't been able to see it yet. Basically, it looks like a star with a smudge on top. Now onto the final image. I mentioned the settings that I used to take this image earlier, but I'll show it again. I love this shot because you can see the blue ion tail that's coming out of the comet, and that's from the particles of the comet reacting with the sun when it flew by a few days ago. All of the previous images were just taken with a tripod and a camera. However, this image was taken with a star tracker and a shutter release cable so that I didn't introduce any shake by pushing the shutter button on the camera to take the image. If you don't have a shutter release cable, then what I would recommend doing is using the timer function on your camera so that when you push the button, it takes about five or 10 seconds before it actually takes the photo so the camera can stabilize and you don't introduce any shake. This star tracker allowed me to take a 60 second exposure of the comet while keeping all the stars and everything sharp. If you've taken long exposures of the night sky without one of these, you've probably noticed that sometimes your stars start to trail, especially as you use longer exposures. This thing essentially rotates your camera along with the stars so that you can take longer exposures and it keeps the same stars in the same positions so that everything is sharp. If you don't have a star tracker, you can still take amazing photos of the comet and of the stars. However, you just won't be able to use extremely long exposures like 60 seconds, for example. You'll have to do something like five, 10, 15 second exposures depending on your focal length. I highly encourage you guys, if you haven't gotten to see the comet yet, to go and check it out. If you have a camera and telescope and binoculars, you probably can see it in light polluted areas like DC, like I showed you with the other image. However, if you really wanna see something spectacular and you really wanna take really, really detailed photos of it without all the light pollution, stuff like that, then try driving out of the city, get somewhere where you have a dark sky, use dark sky maps. There are light pollution maps online that you can use to see how much light pollution is in your area versus in other areas around, nearby, wherever. And you can try to go somewhere darker to be able to see the comet in all of its glory. And it is definitely worth it. If you're trying to locate the comet right now, Go about an hour, an hour and a half after sunset and look for the Big Dipper. That's gonna be your guide. From the Big Dipper, just go downward and you should be able to see the star with a smudge and that is the comet. If you're in a city or a more light polluted area and you have a camera, then what I would suggest is just setting a 10 second exposure or something like that and just pointing it at the sky where you believe it's gonna be and just start snapping photos. Just keep an eye on your photos and hopefully like what happened to me, it's just gonna show up in one of your photos and you'll be able to from there start zooming in and taking more detailed photos. But that's really what you should start off doing. Just start wide, start taking photos of the sky and hope that you spot it in one of your photos. Yeah, I was absolutely mesmerized by this comet and just from the beginning, starting from a photo like this and then going to an end result photo like this, I, it's just amazing. I can't believe that I was able to do that and it's so stunning that this, an object like this is in the night sky right now. So definitely go check it out while it's still around. You have till about the end of the month, I believe before it starts getting dim enough that we can't see it anymore uh, with our eyes. And by that point, you'll only be able to use cameras and it won't be that detailed. On July 22nd, the comet is gonna be at its closest point to earth. And after that, it's just gonna be darting off. So you really don't have a lot of time. So definitely try to take advantage of it while you still can. 
That wraps it up with the Comet Neo Wise. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I hope that you do get a chance to go out and see it for yourself, whether it's just on a camera or something like that um, in a light polluted area or if you get a chance to go into a real dark sky area and see it with your own eyes. It's, it's amazing. You just, just, just go do it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will try to make more in-depth astrophotography guides in the future, so keep an eye out for those. If you are interested in how I edit my photos and the workflows I put into them, then let me know in the comment section below and I will possibly make videos of that nature in the future. But thanks for watching and on that note, I will see you guys in the next one.